just staying on the the content front, we had a, an episode, do we value content and services anymore? And I think we were just had a fairly lengthy discussion this morning before we started recording this about, you know, we were talking about film specifically, but um, you just, in, me, but you just in general, me. it's just, uh, it seems like uh, any sort of content and fake news fits into this perfectly is that it all has become like a jumbled mess. There's mm. all these screens everywhere that we can watch stuff in any, and it's sort of like a premium experience everywhere now. It's not a, just right. going to the cinema or whatnot. Um, I'll just throw in quickly, there was an article about um, Scorsese saying cinema was dead because uh, there's just so many images blanketing our culture now that they have no meaning in yeah. of, of themselves, which I kind of agree on, even though he got crucified by the uh, millennials on uh, forums and whatnot after the fact. Uh, but I think there's uh, an argument for that. I think mm. on the flip side, there's it's really good that you can watch anything at any time at the touch of a button, but then yeah. at the same time, it's like a lazy abundance. You don't have to go... You, it's almost like too much stuff is accessible mm. To you. you don't even know what to pick or uh, what to watch and because it's always available at any time you can watch it at three o'clock in the morning you can watch it at five o'clock in the afternoon you can watch it on a public holiday you can watch it at work you can watch it on a flight it's all instantly accessible so does that mean because it's always there do you actually value it you know like how in the past you'd have to wait for a film to come out they'd announce it you'd have to wait for six months and then you could only watch it in a cinema yeah, you've you got know. me thinking about this, Ben, and I mm. think you've hit on something that's quite interesting there. We won't talk too much about Rogue One, but <laughs> the fact is is they release it now annually, a Star Wars mm. franchise, without any promotion because they don't need to, yep. and people wait all year long for this event, and it's almost like Christmas or probably Christmas is a good example. You don't care if it's going to be good or bad. You just care that it's Christmas, <laughs> and yep. I just, I just kind of wonder if that's, that's once again almost the extremes we're going to. On the one hand, everything else has been devalued because of its abundance, and then on the other hand, they supercharge a single date for the release of this mm. particular film franchise, and it doesn't actually matter whether the film's going to be good or bad. It's just there. It's just there, yeah. and so you, you, you know, fire yourself up all year, and it. It's a bit like going to a sporting match almost. Like you yeah. go to support your team and if you lose, you kind of feel a bit bad but you had the experience. And if you win, you feel fantastic and, and maybe that's what it's kind of like that mm. event programming is is almost in that space. Yeah, exactly. So do you wait all year for a Star Wars film and, you know, like and you don't know whether it's going to be good or bad and it's like going to a game, the tension, (laughs) like, you know. The only thing that I can say is that in growing up, going to the cinema specifically, I would get excited by the announcement of new releases. So Mm -hmm. an example would say be the Lord of the Rings trilogy, knowing that they would come out in December and I'd get, it would be an exciting time to watch the latest instalment because there was Mm -hmm. a three-year period where they came out one after another and that was exciting. But there was a, the film actually turned out to be really high quality and good storytelling and all that. Uh, Without going into the specifics of Rogue One, it was not. Um, But the problem with that is that regardless of whether it was good or not, I actually was not excited at all. I was completely ambivalent. I watched it and I walked out ambivalent. Right. Uh, which I can probably say about The Force Awakens from last year as well. And I, I, the only thing is I had a bit more of a negative feel for that one because I, w- I just couldn't see the point of them remaking the first film mm. again and making $2 billion off it. Good luck to them. But, you know. Sounds like you should have <laughs> gone and seen Sing. <laughs> exactly and it's just become a, a, a form of cultural recycling yeah. which i think we touched upon as well earlier in, we, in one of our exa- early episodes ex- exactly where yeah. you it doesn't matter anymore it's um people just walk out and with the, the attitude oh yeah that was all right and they move on and then they go and watch something else and the, the the film becomes almost disposable and i find a lot of entertainment is like that now and i'd argue that the experience say watching something on netflix is better than going to see something in the cinema because at least the, on Netflix there's more of a chance that you might see something that was of decent storytelling quality, You're shall right. we say. <laughs> You're right. The, and I think that's something that we've really seen change. Mm. Uh, and, I mean, I remember back in the Fist Fat Chat days we were talking about will Netflix actually continue mm. to improve and I think it has. I yep. think there's no question it has. 